Hello everybody and welcome back to SFF 180. It is Monday, March the 4th, I believe. <laughs> I've gotten so dependent on my phone calendar that I don't keep track of these things. I'm so lame. Eh. Anyway, welcome back. I hope you guys had a great week and a great weekend. It is time once again for the mail bag. Decent little stack this week, so we'll get right to them. Quick announcements. First off, uh, I have found out that March the 15th is the deadline to get your Hugo nominations in. Now, in order to nominate for the Hugos, you have to be, at a bare minimum, a supporting member of Dublin 2019, and you have to have gotten your membership, you know, taken care of, paid for, signed up, all of that, by the end of last year. Sorry, that's the rule. Uh, also, if you were either supporting or attending San Jose, you may also, that carries over, you may also nominate. As always, I remind you that uh, Vine Truly is eligible in the fan cast category. Would really like to see BookTube SFF just, you know, make a showing for once. You know, I, I've been nominating all BookTubers. <laughs> but anyway, just to say that if you have appreciated my work last year and over the years on SFF 180 and you feel that it's worthy of a recognition, then I appreciate your nomination as well as anybody else uh, that you might think of. Um, and FanCast is a down-ballot category, too, so it really does not take too many people nominating in that category to, you know, get something on the ballot. But anyway, thank you all very much. I'll leave that relevant uh, info down below. And also, for those other awards, those BookTube SFF awards, March is now here. Read-alongs for all of these shortlisted works are beginning. Uh, I am leading the read-along for The Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Kowal. Uh, go to the uh, Goodreads group to find out more information, as well as like the individual discussion threads for those read-alongs, things like that. You know, and to see what's being read in what month, who's leading that read-along, etc. Okay, so that is underway. It is now time to get reading these books. Hmm. <sighs> Anything else? No, nothing else. Thank God. All right, announcements are done. Let's dig in to this week's book, shall we? And this week is really tour books heavy on the arrivals. I'm not going to hold this big white envelope up too high because I found out that it really messes with the lighting and the camera and like darkens the whole image. But here it is, a whole bunch of tour envelopes. So let's just get into them and see what we have this week. And I'm absolutely out of my mind with excitement to finally have this in. Uh, this book is out right now from tour in hardcover. This is Broken Stars. And it is a new anthology of Chinese science fiction, uh, both edited and translated by Ken Liu. And uh, this is um, a follow-up to uh, the earlier collection that he did, a couple of years back called Invisible Planets. And uh, so let's see, in this one we have, let's see, stories by, uh, well, you know, there's, there is a Lucy Jian story in here. Uh, there's also a story by Bao Shu. Oh, it is, it's the story that appeared in... Uh, fantasy and Science Fiction magazine, FNSF, a few years ago. What has passed shall in kinder light appear. Uh, that's a fantastic story. I said that alone is worth getting this anthology for. It's basically about um, an alternate China in which scientific progress sort of ran in reverse. So you start out with a China where everybody has like smart TVs and things like that and uh, and you end up where <laughs> those are basically in like a hundred year old technology and just scraping by. But it's a fascinating alternate history of China. So, yeah, Broken Stars, available now uh, in hardcover from Tor Books. And next in from Tor, this is actually one from Tor Teen. Uh, this is a book called Spectacle, and the author is Jody Lynn Zdirak. I want, I, I'm sure I mangled the pronunciation of that. I really have no idea. It's spelled Z-D-R-O-K. That's her name. And this appears to be an alternate history paranormal murder thriller, as it were. It's about this young woman who has a psychic gift where she finds that she has sort of like tuned into the mind of a murderer. And worse yet, the murderer is aware that she is tuned into him and I guess is now kind of coming after her. And I think like this takes place, you know, again, during the Ripper period and all, but it's in Paris, Paris 1887. So it's in the Ripper era, but in Paris. Hmm, interesting, could be some good suspense. Uh, but again, it's called Spectacle, you know, Jody Lynn Zdurak, uh, and it's available now from Tortin in hardcover. And next from Tor, uh, we have Strife's Bane. Uh, this is an epic fantasy by Evie Minieri, 
This is the author, and this is the third and final volume uh, in her trilogy called the Shattered Kingdoms Trilogy. First couple of volumes were Blood's Pride and Fortune's Blight. And we now have Strife's Bane. And uh, this appears to be another one of those where the trilogy has kind of taken a bit, you know, taken long to sort of shake out and complete itself. Um, I remember, I think, receiving the first volume of this like, quite a few years ago. And uh, so, but they've now finished it up. And uh, this is about, I think, a family that is uh, dealing with defending their land against uh, these invading hordes who are telepathic. So uh, it's finishing up now. Uh, to be honest, I have heard from the people you know, who have read and reviewed Blood's Pride, you know, that it's getting it's getting mixed reviews. I'll just put it that way. But Strife's Bane is out now, completing the trilogy from Tor Books. And rounding out the Tor arrivals, this is by Ari Salvatore, and this is Reckoning of Fallen Gods. And again, it's available now in hardcover. Uh, this is a second book in a series called The Coven, and I actually think it's a duology. And it follows up Child of a Mad God from last year. Only person I know who has read Child of a Mad God um, would be Sam from Sam's Nonsense, and she hated it. And I feel a little guilty about that because I'm the one who sent her my, the, the, the arc for that. She was really excited to read it before it came out. And I'm like, well, I have a spare one. I'll send it to you. She's like, oh, great, thanks. And then she read it and hated it. So I go, sorry, my bad. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to assume she won't be reading this one. But if you liked Child of a Mad God and want to read Reckoning of Fallen Gods, well, now's your chance. It's available from Tor. And I think that's going to be all the Tor stuff. So next up, I have a little envelope here. Oh, good. This is one I requested. Uh, this is from a small press uh, out of Orlando called Burrow Press. So uh, yeah, I know what's in this one. This is a novella or a short novel, if you prefer, uh, called Radio Dark. And the author is Shane Hinton. Uh, this comes out on August the 20th, and uh, it's a bit of weird fiction set in Florida, right? As if Florida needed to be any weirder. All right, uh, it goes like this. Radio Dark fuses Cormac McCarthy's visceral realism with Daniil Karm's absurdist sensibility to create a uniquely surreal post-apocalyptic novel. Uh, a mysterious condition sweeps the country, leaving its victims in a catatonic state. The power grid fails and the world goes dark. Somewhere in Florida, where the sprawling suburbs meet a dying citrus grove, a janitor at a small community radio station, an FCC field agent, and a DJ attempt to restore order and humanity. They build a radio tower to recruit survivors. As newcomers arrive and occupy the homes of the affected, a community grows and thrives. But when supplies dwindle and more people succumb to the condition, a doomsday preacher arrives to test the limits of the community and the radio tower, once seen as a marvel, begins to look like an abomination. See, I requested this one because I'm trying to think ahead for my Halloween reading this year, you see. And uh, this one just seemed weird and creepy and right up my street. Uh, but Radio Dark by Shane Hinton, as I said, comes out August the 20th from Burrow Press. And next up, Random Penguin. This is the trade paperback edition from Broadway Books of The Grey Bastards, a debut grimdark fantasy by Jonathan French. Um, they, I've already gotten this one in hardcover, but it just hasn't ended up in the queue quite yet, but maybe it's time because the trade paperback comes out March the 19th, and then the second book in the series, The True Bastards, comes out on October the 8th. And this one started out as a self-published book that I think um, did very well in the like self publisher's blog off thing that Mark Lawrence hosts to sort of raise the profile of self-published writers. This I believe is a book that um, like was one of the top finalists in that little contest. So he got the big publisher deal and uh, now it is turning into a series. So to recap the plot for you, Jackal is proud to be a gray bastard. A member of a sworn brotherhood of half-orcs, unloved and unwanted in civilized society, the bastards eke out a hard life in the desolate no-man's land called the Lots, protecting frail and noble human civilization from invading bands of full-blooded orcs. But as Jackal is soon to learn, his pride may be misplaced because a festering secret lies at the heart of the bastards' existence, one that reveals the truth behind humanity's tenuous peace with the orcs and exposes the danger on the horizon. On the heels of the ultimate betrayal, Jackal must scramble to stop an invasion even as he wonders where his true loyalties lie. All right, so there you go. The Grey Bastards coming out in the middle of March in trade paperback. And another random penguin package. 
I'm happy to have this. Uh, this is a book called Titan Shade. I've been seeing it around, getting a little bit of buzz on social media. The author is Dan Stout. And if the cover looks to you a lot like that old movie TV show Alien Nation, I think that is probably kind of the idea, but I'm sure it has, you know, a rather fresh spin on that concept. Is there a cell sheet? I bet there's no, there never is. Okay. It's uh, coming out from DAW anyway, and it goes like this. Carter's a homicide cop in Titan Shade, an oil boomtown where eight tracks are state of the art. Disco eight tracks are kind of, they're like, they were before cassette tapes for you millennials out there. And they were really clunky. Anyway, Google them. Anyway, disco rules the radio and all the best sorcerers wear designer labels. It's also a metropolis teetering on the edge of disaster. As its oil reserves run dry, the city's future hangs on a possible investment from the reclusive amphibians known as squibs. But now, negotiations have been derailed by the horrific murder of a squib diplomat. The pressure's never been higher to make a quick arrest, even as Carter's investigation leads him into conflict... Conflict? Conflict? Well, that's just as bad. Conflict with the city's elite. Undermined by corrupt co-workers and falsified evidence, and with a suspect list that includes power-hungry politicians, oil magnates, and mad scientists, Carter must find the killer before the investigation turns into a witch hunt, and those closest to him pay the ultimate price on the filthy streets of Titan Shade. All right, this sounds like a real kick in the pants. Looking forward to reading it. From Dan Stout, Titan Shade, coming out from Doll Books. Two more packages to go, and this is one. Oh, interesting. So this is from Brilliance Audio. I don't usually review audiobooks, but uh, let's, let's see what they sent me. I'm curious about this. Oh, okay. Well, it's not an audiobook. It's a paper book, and it uh, looks to be a YA title uh, called The Fever King. The author is Victoria Lee. All right. Uh, and it says she's a moral psychologist. Victoria Lee is fascinated by how our emotions affect and influence the ethical decisions we make. Inspired by her extensive research and study of the gray area between heroic and villainous acts and how both can be justified by the individual's own subjective point of view, she's written her debut novel, The Fever King. Interesting, okay. Uh, comes out, came out March the 1st. In The Fever King, magic is a virus that kills almost everyone it infects in the former United States. There are rare survivors who have antibodies in their blood that allow them to use magic rather than being by consumed by it. Rather than being consumed by it. There it is, Thomas. 16-year-old Noam Alvaro wakes up in a hospital bed to find his family killed by the viral magic and himself imbued with technopathy, the ability to control technology with his mind. His new power attracts the attention of the Minister of Defense and thrusts him into the magical elite of the nation of Carolinia. The son of undocumented immigrants, Noam has spent his life fighting for the rights of refugees fleeing magical outbreaks. Refugees Carolinia routinely deports with vicious efficiency. Oh, there we go. We're, we're timely in our politics. Sensing an opportunity to make change, Noam accepts the minister's offer to teach him the science behind his magic secretly planning to use it against the government. But then he meets the minister's son, cruel, dangerous, and achingly beautiful. Uh-oh. And the way forward becomes less clear for him. Don't do it. It's a trap. You know, you'll, you'll remember your mission. Uh, caught between his mission and his heart, no one must decide who he can trust and how far he's willing to go in pursuit of the greater good. Okay, then. Well, there you are. The Fever King, science fiction and fantasy novel for our times. Okay. Featuring a remarkable and flawed main character who happens to be biracial, Latino and Jewish, and bisexual. Okay. And it's book one in the Fever Wake series and came out, like I said, on March the 1st. Yeah, urban fantasy is not usually my thing, but that could have an interesting spin or two. All right. And finishing up this week, we've got this from Random Penguin. And we're wrapping up this week with an arc for a book called Pass of Fire. I, I don't know if you're supposed to read it as Pacifier. Probably not. Uh, but this is by Taylor Anderson, and this is the 14th volume in what must uh, only be a, an amazingly popular series, uh, the Destroyer Men series, of which I have every book, and I've just never dug into it. I don't know why, I just haven't. But uh, it's described as a new and genuinely different alternate Earth story, uh, set on a riveting imaginative version of an alternate Earth. 
A New York Times best-selling Destroyer Men series has thrilled fans and garnered him a spot at the forefront of military science fiction. So it's that kind of thing. And humans are basically allied with uh, aliens uh, in various conflicts in this series. So this one comes out June the 11th. It's the 14th book in the series, following uh, Matt Reddy and the crew of the USS Walker, etc., etc. Desperate times call for desperate measures. 14 books in, either you're following this series or you're not. All right? But the new one comes out, like I said, June the 11th from Ace Books. And there we have it. That is another week in the mailbag. You guys know the drill. Light up those comments. Let me know which of these looks most interesting and exciting to you, which you would like to see me prioritize for review. Otherwise, if you enjoyed watching, uh, please hit that like button, share the video far and wide with all of your SFF reading friends, and above all, please subscribe if you have not done so. That is how the channel grows. You can also support the channel at my Tee Public store and at my Patreon. Our recruits in the Rex Army get little perks like getting to see some of these videos a day early. I appreciate uh, all of them, all my recruits, for your additional support. It is extremely helpful in the running of the channel. I want to thank all the rest of you guys for being the most amazing viewers in all of BookTube. And until I see you all next time, <laughs> happy reading. <laughs>